Hello everybody, uh, you haven't heard from me in a while to be fair, um, I've just been really stuck into the back end of the business and uh, Roby who's joined our team recently, if you haven't seen the post, has been, uh, I guess, taking on more of the, the front side of things, being the face of the business and the voice of the business, which is good because my voice is, uh, is not as good as his. <laughs> so. Hopefully you can see the effects of the tutorials and documentation getting better. But uh, yeah, just want this video is just to uh, help you explain some of the new features in Divi Machine. Uh, so currently this video is for the beta testers, but I think I will release this video as well once the updates out. So beta testers, there's a couple of things to to check, and I'm just going to run through some of the the changes. So, uh, let me just go over here. Okay. So, I've got my two videos. So, there's on this side. And so, I may look between the two. So, the first the first real thing that's, that we've added in machine is for the archive loop, the ability to choose multiple post types. So, before, it was just a select box. And you could choose, okay, cars posts, pages, whatever it is. Now we can choose multiple. So this is the main thing that we need to be checking is are your are your archive loops still displaying correctly? And especially with the Ajax filters, are they filtering correctly? So check those two things. Uh, so here you can see that you can choose, okay, so I want to show my cars and my dealers and then I can do that. So that's the first main thing to check and a nice new feature to have. So yeah, many people have asked for it. Uh, so the second thing is, you don't have to test this, but well, actually no, just double check this, sorry, is we've added include tags, uh, exclude tags as well. So now we have include and exclude categories and tags. Please make sure these are slugs, not RDs. I think before sometimes we had RDs and it just got confusing, so we've made them all slugs now. So you add the slug, comma separated. The other cool feature we've added is uh, the sort by order. Some of you may know previously we had sort by advanced custom field date picker. Now we have sort by advanced custom field as well. So you can choose this, choose your field, for example, I don't know, maybe I'll make it make, and the make is a string, it's not a number, so it's a, it's a, it's a word, so I choose string. Now it'll sort all the cars based on the make, so Audi would come first, BMW, uh, Ford, then Mustang, not Mustang, <laughs> then Mercedes, uh, for example. Uh, that's obviously ascending, and then you can also choose descending if you want. Or it could be numeric, so maybe I want to sort by number of doors. Here's my number of doors, so there's so much stuff here. Um, doors. And it's numeric, so it's a number, uh, so then now it'll do the three doors first, and then the five doors second, for example. So that's another cool little new feature. The other one is compatibility with advanced custom fields, option pages. So if you're not aware of this, uh, you can create option pages, almost like theme settings, uh, and then you can use that as well. So with with the with the um, with the advanced custom field item. If you scroll down and specific settings, here you can choose this setting is an, an options page and it's not part of a post. So we know how to kind of deal with the data. So another really cool feature which we think is really great is we've added the option to create some unique styles, a bit like a bit like this. So you can see with the gallery grid, we've created this nice 
this nice grid to have one big image in the middle and then the images all around it. How do you go about doing this? It's a bit of a it's a bit more advanced, but I'll try and explain it. We're going to be creating a doc about this. Um, so the idea is what you want to do is you want to make sure it's grid. The gallery type is selected to grid. You want you can, but I'd preferably want to define the image count because with the CSS custom code for the grid, you need to specify all of them. So if you've got five showing, you need to specify five. You'll see in a minute or ten or whatever. So I've chosen none. I don't know why, but I've chosen none. So image count is none. Uh, then go down to your the grid style. We want to choose grid. And the first thing to point out is the grid columns. You want to define which one you want. I've gone for four. So you can see I have one, two, three, four columns. And then I've customized the four columns. So actually if I inspect this page, I can show you what I'm talking about. There. So you can see I've got four columns. One, two, three, four. The first image is taking up uh, row one, column one. The second image is taking up row one, column two and three, and row two, column two and three. The third image is taking up row one, column four. Okay, and then it works that way. So this way you can create some really unique, interesting uh, styles. So going back to our settings, uh, once we've done that, we can add our custom code. Now, how does this work? Okay, so uh, what we you can if you know how to custom code uh, some grid CSS, you can do this yourself, or we've got a neat little tool which you can use as well. So if you see over here, always start with mod dash. So we've called it mod dash. And the reason is, for every single item in here, we add this grid area mod 1, which is our identifier. Grid area mod 2, grid area mod 3, and so on. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, this is the identifier for you to target with the CSS. Now what, what the CSS says is mod 1. So you can see it's got one, two, three, four columns. One, two, three, four columns. And for mod one, take up column one, row one. Mod two, take up column two, uh, row one. Co column three, row one. Column two, row two. Column three, row two. So you can see how it's almost creating this. Visually, if you're a visual person, you can visually see what's happening here. In three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's this website over here which you can use called gridlayout.it.com. Um, gridlayout uh, I don't know if you can clear this. Yeah, so there we go. So we start off, and the way it works is currently it's got three columns. I want it to be four columns because that's my style. So I have four columns over here. Let me just move my mug over there. Now let's say I want to have my first one take up these four squares. So I can drag it, drag it. I'm going to call it mod one. Then I want to have. Oh, I need to save it. Don't I? Save. Then I want to have mod two, mod three, mod four, mod five, mod six, mod seven, mod. Eight, mod nine. So here I've created my grid now. This is a different style to how I had it before. So I want my first image to take up two, then these, then third, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the rest can just carry on. I can also change that if I want, but that's the way I want it now. So I've created it. Head over here and copy it. So you can see actually it helps you highlight things up nicely over here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go ahead and copy this code over here. Uh, what you must remember is have it as mod dash and then the number. We've just done it like that. So, 
and just paste that in here. Remove this gap. And let's see what happens. There we go. So you can see in the Visual Builder, it then generates how it's going to look. So you can see I've got mod 1 taking up 4 squares, mod 2, mod 3, mod 4, mod 5, mod 6, blah, blah, blah. And I want to save that. And then take a look on the front end. So you can see it's loading nice how I wanted it to be. So you can create some custom looking styles with CSS grid. Okay, so that's that's a, a nice little new feature. And I 100% believe you guys can create some unique looking websites with this. We've added some conditional logic to this uh, as well. So the first one is to, uh, if we go down main options, you may not have noticed this before, but we really have the visibility option. So for logged in users only or all. The main, well, one of the con new conditional logics is we have what to do with, empty, with an empty value. So currently, when an advanced custom field renders empty, we then hide the module. So there's no space taken up, which is great. But what if you want to do something else? Here are some other options. You can hide the parent row and this module parent section and this module, hard another element and this module or custom text. So these two are quite self-explanatory. Hard another element, you can then choose the selector. So let's say I have an advanced custom field um, that says that has that is empty and if it's empty I want to hard an image for example. I will then add a CSS class for example image one hard, I don't know, give it a dots in between because it's a class, at the start because it's a class. So now if the value renders empty, it will hide the module and also the image who has the class image underscore one underscore hard, for example. They can be anything. Lastly, custom text, if it renders empty, you can just define some custom text to show. So, if you scroll down to conditional settings, there's some more here. So, checkbox select, add value as CSS class. So, this can be really helpful if you want to create some really unique looking websites. So, I'm going to use the example of light and dark, okay? Let's say you have a website and you, have, you want to add some custom CSS for when the page is light and when the page is dark. How do you go about doing that? So, you create an advanced custom field select option or checkbox. You add the values light and dark. Then, you on each of the custom posts, you select light or dark, light or dark, light or dark. You come here, you add the advanced custom field item to the page, you enable it here. First, you need to choose the selector where you want to add the class. So I would have it as body, but you can do whatever you want it to be. So at currently now, if you save it, when you choose light, it will then add to the body the class light. If you choose dark, it will add to the body dark. And then with that, you can add custom code of your own. If you want to prefix it, so layout dash, it will be layout dash light, layout dash dark, or dark dash layout. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. And then you can then target things on the page depending on the CSS class. Another thing you can do is, with a true or false advanced custom field, you can have, an, uh, have another module column row in the same section. So if you, so let's say you have, let's say on the archive loop, you have a view post button, okay? And on some of them, you don't want the person to click through to the, custom, to the post. How do you hide the, the, the button on some of the on some of the posts and not all of them. Well, if you add a true false field in advanced custom fields and have it as hard view post button, when they say select yes, you can then add the class of what you want to hard. So et 
underscore p pv button, for example, would be the class for the button that's on the custom loop layout. So when you when you when you check it and have the setting enabled, when it it'll then look for the nearest section and then look for the class etpv button and hide that in the nearest section. If that makes sense. Uh, there's yeah, that's kind of the bulk of the update. There's quite a lot of other stuff we've added. Uh, so really, that's just show you some of the features you can try. But the main thing we want with this beta testing is please can you try and check um, please can you try and check the Ajax filtering and the display of your posts using the archive loop. Because of the because of the multiple posts we've added, there could be uh, like we've, we've done some testing, we've, we've have, we have some fallback settings and things like that, which hopefully will help solve it all if there are any issues. But it would just be nice to know because the what because of the complexity of sites that can be made and number of different ways people to people to make sites, there may be a, a bug in one or two different cases which we want to pick up before releasing live. So it would be really helpful if you can help if you can help us with that. Um, otherwise. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this update. And we're always trying to push the plugins forward and add new stuff. And then because of this, potentially there can be some some bugs or things along the way which we which we try to get first. And that's why we have this beta version as well. So enjoy it. And any questions, let us know. Uh, any issues, please email support at divyengine.com. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.